Graphics cards in 2021 and 2022 have been very, very difficult to find. And so this question may rub at least a few people the wrong way because many of you want to upgrade to an RTX 3070. And this question is, when should you upgrade from an RTX 3070? Meaning you have a 3070, when should you just throw that piece of trash into the garbage? First, a word from our sponsor, Crypto.com, home of the Visa card that pays you up to 8% in rewards and the app that pays you up to 14.5% annually on your crypto stake. Join more than 10 million users on the world's fastest growing crypto app as you trade with confidence on the world's fastest and most secure crypto exchange. More information and a special sign-up offer at the end of this video. I'm being facetious, of course, that's absurd, but if somebody has a 3070 and they have an ultra wide monitor and they have a Ryzen 9 5900X and they're a premium high end user and they do gaming and content creation, it is a fair question how long will all of this last? Uh -huh. Because while that would be an amazing aspirational PC, and to everybody who's on lower end stuff who goes, man, I just wish I could go to that, by all means, it's good for engagement. Leave a comment in the comment section below saying, gee, I wish I could upgrade to that. He should sell it to me for cheap. Quick, 37 of you all go leave that comment right now. It's greatly appreciated. So, um, so how about we, so Christian comes in, he says, keep up the good work. Thank you. He upgraded to the 5900X, 32 gigs of RAM and RTX 3070 ultra wide monitor uh, in December of 2020. He's gaming and content creation, and he wants to know how soon would you upgrade to the latest? 2022, 2023, when would be a good time frame? Well, let me start with the CPU really quickly. The CPU in all likelihood is going to cover you through this generation to the point to where you basically need to build a new machine. It'll cover you through probably the mid-level of AM5 with Zen 4 or maybe even Zen 5. So essentially, you'll keep this as long as you can deal with the CPU and it meets your needs, and then you're going to have to replace everything. You'll need a new motherboard, you'll need new DDR5 RAM, PCI Express 5. I mean, essentially, this will sort of all retire as a unit. It, you're not likely, I mean, you might keep the power supply, you might keep the case, you might keep the cooler, but beyond that, you're not going to keep anything else from this generation. Having said that, how long a 5900X lasts depends entirely upon what you do. Do you make money with your computer? Yeah. Are you doing 4K video editing? Are you doing 3D animation, Blender? Are you a serious content creator? Because the 5900X is great, but we have coming very soon Zen 3 Plus oh. refresh chips with the 3D cache. Correct. The 6000 series that will be AM4 chips and that will drop in on this. Zen 4 will be 7000 series and that's not coming for another year. That actually probably would be 2023. Depending upon his use case, an upgrade to a 6950X 16-core 3DB cache chip might actually make sense if he's making money with the computer. If he's not making money with the computer, then I would plan on keeping this through maybe even Zen 5. 2024, probably at the soonest, two years, Anything sooner than that, you're just throwing money for small upgrades. Correct. If you think you need an upgrade sooner than two years from now, why didn't you just get a 5950X, spend the extra 200 bucks, get the 16 cores? These constant upgrades, I think, are very expensive. And I think people who just make a lot of jumps throw lots of money into changing parts for incremental change. You never get a wow moment. Nope. You never get a holy shmulligans. Now... 32 gigs of RAM. RAM's very dependent upon use case, but he says gaming and content creation. Adding another, adding another 32 gigs of RAM is 100 bucks. Go to 64. You'll be shocked. I have 64 in all of the machines I actually use, except for like one or two very basic machines. Uh, you recently got a RAM upgrade at home. Our kids now have 64 gigs, except our youngest son who still has 32. I know. Poor him. He's 11. Such a shame. It works for him, though. It does. But you know something? He's about to get two monitors. Oh, yeah, he's going to... I'll, I'll upgrade his RAM. And then he'll just need a video card upgrade here. That brings us to the point of this whole thing. Video card. That is the single weakest component of this system. And I know people who can't find a 3070 might be a little hurt by hearing that. 
but he's got an ultra wide monitor. He does. So somebody who has a 34 inch, 3440 by 1440p ultra wide monitor, a 3070 is just barely adequate. Depends on what you do with it, depends on the games you play, but I had a 3070 and I have a 34 inch ultra wide at home as well. Yep. And it was lovely until I played Cyberpunk and then it was crap. And you may not like Cyberpunk, but there may be some other game that you play. And the difference in both performance and visual fidelity. Simple example. On a 3070, with detail level at um, medium, ray tracing medium, DLSS in, I think it was performance mode. It has been a year since I've done this. But uh, ray tracing medium, DLSS on... I was able to average about 45 frames per second in Cyberpunk 2077 on a 3070 using an i9-9900K CPU and 64 gigs of RAM and a very otherwise nice machine. I went from a 3070 to a 3090, which I've had many people say, well, that's not really worth doing. Well, normally it wouldn't be, except I had something else to do with the 3070, so, you know, it helps being in the YouTube tech business. You could justify this. Mm -hmm. I went from 45 frames per second to 60. I went from medium to ultra. I went to ultra ray tracing, ultra detail, and DLSS quality, and gained 30% frames. The difference in smoothness and playability was night and day. It is also worth noting that Cyberpunk was consistently using about 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So the eight gigs of VRAM is also a limitation. And so your eight gigabytes is also going to be a limitation, especially on new games this year. So the minute the 40 series launches, the right. minute pre-orders are open, the minute it launches on launch day, get one. Which one? I actually might consider arguing for, I mean, obviously we don't know the details and specs, but a if you're going to make one generation change like that, a 4080, because a 3080 would be a better choice right now than a 3070. Don't ponder, don't wait for a sale, don't go, eh, well, maybe in a few months I'll find a good deal. Don't dilly-dally. No. Boom. You, and this advice really applies to everybody watching. If you are due for a GPU upgrade and you're waiting for the 4 Series to launch, a lot of other people are sick of waiting and they're all going to just buy. It's not, they're not going to be widely available. You have to just grab one when it's available and well then you get to enjoy it and watch everyone else flounder normally i say wait for reviews newsflash the 4070 will be faster than the 3070 film at 11 there review complete go buy one um so i would keep the rest of the pc but the real reason we're discussing this and making this video is if you at all think you will need a gpu upgrade Somewhere between 2022 and 2024, by the 40 series, the minute it launches. And the simple reason being is NVIDIA launches new graphics cards every two years. Mm -hmm. 2020 was 30 series, 2018 was 20 series, 2016 was 10 series, 2014 was 900 series. So 2024 will be the 50 series. Do you want to wait till 2024 for a graphics card? The end of 2024. That's nearly three years from now. Mm -hmm. If the answer is no, then you just buy a 40 series the minute it launches at whatever you can find, at the best you can find, at the best you can afford, and you go, that's what I'm doing. Because this isn't going to get better in nine months. No, I don't think so. It just isn't. Mm -mm. You were a little optimistic with nine months. <sighs> Would you add anything to this? Uh, adding to that? Well, basically, it'll last until it just doesn't do what you need it to do. And everyone's different, which is why it's so hard to answer that. And it depends on the games that you're playing. If you're okay to play three-year-old games, it'll last a little longer than if you want new games. If you're editing 1080p versus 4K versus 8K, that'll change your time frame as well. So, you know, keep an eye on your use case. Buy to your use case. Why is that so hard for people? I think a lot of people don't realize how different the requirements are between different use cases. I get comments all the time from people who say, 
Well, I have a five-year-old i5 and 16 gigs of RAM and a 1060, and it works great for me. I don't understand what all these people are yakking about. And he's playing Overwatch, which is fine. Lots of people play Overwatch. Or he's playing GTA 5 or CSGO. Okay, you don't need an upgrade. But, but then they post, oh, you people are just wasting your money on your computers. Okay, just because Bob Schnitzelhorf doesn't need an upgrade does not mean that, you know, Give me another name. I need Dave. more than one name. Dave. Dave. Dave needs an upgrade. If Christian just spent this kind of money, especially with an ultra wide monitor, he's probably not playing CSGO on it. And if he is, then he bought too much computer. Dave too. He's a legend. Anyway. Yeah. But especially, that's why this is being titled about the 3070 because. Unlike your RAM or your CPU or a lot of other things, the minute that 40 series launches, buy. We said it a year ago when the 30 series yep, launched. We did. Just buy. Yep. And people are like, well, they'll wait for a deal. And how has that worked out? <laughs> Not very good, especially for those people who sold their, their 20 series cards before they got their 30 series card. The first 3070 that I bought for the YouTube channel was in November of 2020. Uh, 2020. We, yes. November of 2020, I bought an MSI Gaming X Trio off of eBay. Ugh, I know. I paid a scalper. Bad tech. I paid $750 for it with free shipping delivered. Boy, that was a good deal. Wish I had bought them all. Um, I thought I was overpaying mm -hmm. because I thought... Okay, give it a month or two. They'll be available. They're five seventy nine. That particular card was five seventy nine listed at Newegel that was out of stock at the time. I'm like, I'm paying like a hundred and whatever over new. What a waste of money, man! <laughs> I wish I could buy a hundred thirty seventies for seven hundred and fifty dollars. I know because they're, they're not never, that. They're not that now, and they never were again. Mm -hmm. I actually bought it when it was the cheapest. Yep, and I bet you they're sitting there going, "Damn it, I just waited." Um, fun fact, mm -hmm. a used MSI Gaming X Trio 3070 non-LHR card right now is worth almost double that. It's worth $1,400 on eBay. Showing. Used. 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 I won't say the C word, but it has to do with the C word. Oh my God. Christian, hopefully that helps you out. How many of you have a Visa card that pays you up to 8% on every purchase? Crypto.com offers an amazing deal on their Visa card with cash back that is an unbeatable deal. No annual fee, no sign-up fee, and no credit checks or interest payments. It works just like a prepaid debit card, allowing you to spend your money everywhere Visa is accepted. But wait, there's more. Get your Spotify, Netflix, and Amazon Prime subscriptions 100% paid for by Crypto.com. Yes, you heard me right. Use your new Crypto.com Visa card to pay for your subscriptions and you get 100% back in rewards. How would you like to earn up to 14.5% annual interest on your crypto holdings? If you're holding crypto for investment, inflation protection, or price speculation, it can be frustrating feeling like your money is just parked. Interest is paid weekly directly to your account to spend however you like. The interest is also paid in the same token that you're holding. So if you have Bitcoin staked, you are in Bitcoin. If you have Ethereum staked, you are in Ethereum, and so on. Of course, you can also buy, sell, and exchange 200 plus different cryptocurrencies. Crypto.com is first and foremost a crypto exchange. Its features including a private wallet with full control of your private keys, margin and derivatives trading options for advanced traders, crypto credit allows you to borrow against your holdings with no deadlines or credit checks, crypto NFTs allows you to explore the new world of non-fungible tokens, Crypto Pay allows you to pay any merchant with crypto and earn up to 10% back in rewards. If you are looking for the place to be in crypto, use our link down in the video description below to sign up today. 
you will get a $25 crypto signup bonus and 30 days of 0% transaction fees on credit and debit card purchases of crypto. It supports the channel and gets you a great offer to get started.